to that special number this morning. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We will be concluding our study this morning on the Sermon on the Mount. We have been looking at Matthew's chapter, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 over the past several months, just going through and looking at these teachings of Christ. Uh, these were teachings that Christ had for his disciples, and these teachings were going to be essential. These were essential truths that his followers were going to need to know if they were going to have success, and particularly spiritual success. And really, throughout Christ's ministry, he was preparing his disciples for his departure, because he knew he wasn't going to be with his disciples forever, so he was doing all of these things to prepare his disciples to be able to stand, um, not only, but in his power as he would ascend back into heaven after his death, burial, and resurrection. And if these were essential truths that his disciples need to know, these are also essential truths that we need to know, as we are too seeking to be faithful followers of Christ, just as his disciples were. And as a way of review, Christ taught on many different things in these three chapters. And when we stop and really th think about and look at the things that we've talked about, it really does cover a majority of our life. And in areas in which we need to have the wisdom from God's word and able to live properly. We have looked at, throughout this study, things like having a proper internal attitude as we looked at the Beatitudes. Uh, we have looked at how we as Christians have a responsibility to be salt and light in the evil world that we live in, those who are proper representations of Christ. We looked at proper teaching of the law, where as the Pharisees and the religious teaching teachers of that day were teaching very hypocritical things, um, Christ was teaching that behind the law was having the proper heart attitude and the proper motive behind following the law. And this would apply to things like anger and murder. This would apply to things like adultery. This would apply to marriage. This would apply to taking oaths. This would be applying to going the second mile and helping other people. This is applied to loving your enemies. So this is making sure that we have the proper heart attitude when it comes to doing these things that, whereas the religious teachers of that day were teaching a hypocritical style of carrying out these things, Christ is teaching the proper true way in which we are to live our lives. Not just specifically in these areas that we talked about, but really overall as we seek to please him of having a proper heart attitude. We see that Christ also addresses topics like doing good to please God and not pleasing others or even praise for ourselves, but rather we do righteous deeds, we do good things in order to first and foremost please the Lord. We looked at prayer and how Christ has given us a model in which we are to pray and looking at how important prayer is in the Christian life. We looked at fasting and some truths behind fasting. We looked at really our motivation in life and how we are to be laying up for ourselves heavenly treasures and not earthly treasures. And how we need to make sure the light of our eye or the motive in which we live is a proper motive that is based in the word of God. And, we, and how this extends to even our service for God, knowing that we can't serve both God and riches or the things of this world. Um, because we would love one and hate the other, but rather we need to be singular in our service, singular in serving God and laying up for ourselves heavenly treasures. We looked at teachings on worry and how this is something that applies really to everyone because everyone has moments in their lives where they worry or have anxious thoughts or, or things of that nature and how Christ addresses those and how we can have confidence in the Lord as our provider and as our caretaker when things are stressful. We also looked about judgment and how we are warned about being careful when we are doing biblical judgment of others and making sure that our eye is whole or healthy, that we are checking our lives first before we would ever even think about addressing another believer in which they may be um, making mistakes or living in a way that is not pleasing to the Lord. 
we looked at the persistence in prayer, how we are to keep knocking, keep seeking, and keep trying to do the will of the Lord. And we looked last week at the narrow way, the narrow path, and how there are a few that find the narrow path, but this is the path that leads to life versus the broad path, which leads to destruction. And that not everyone who claims to be a Christian is truly a Christian, that there are what the Bible refers to as wolves in sheep's clothing, and how the fruit of our life is the way that we can have assurance of knowing that we are truly saved in a way that we can test others to see if they are um, these wolves in sheep's clothing or not. Which brings us to where we are today, this, this final passage. And like so many of other of Christ's teachings, as we look through and just briefly gone through um, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and almost all of chapter 7, looking at these different topics, Christ uses illustrations. All right, he used illustrations throughout all of these teachings because these illustrations really help us get a better mental picture and really help the truth to set into our lives as we're able to take this truth and apply it through an illustration to what we would be familiar with. And this is what Christ is doing in his conclusion here in verses 24 through 29. And he really gives us a perfect picture of what we can expect if we live in accordance to the truths that he talks about and really the truths of his word. So let's read verses 24 through 29. You can follow along as I read aloud Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24. It says, therefore, so in light of everything that Christ had just talked about, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So we see this illustration of, of buildings and builders in these verses. And this is how Christ chooses to conclude this, this group of, of teachings. Right? We, we talked about that word, therefore, at the beginning. So really, in light of everything that he just taught, and again, these were teachings that the people had never heard because in verses 28 and 29, the people were astonished by his doctrine or the teaching that he was doing because of the authority that he had, not as the authority of the scribes. It was a different type of authority. Obviously, we know this authority of being heavenly authority, meaning that this is the truth. And we see how Christ ties it all together. So the first point that we'll be looking at is the wise builder, the wise builder. So in the beginning of verse 24, we see, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. Christ begins by giving us the analogy of the wise builder. So thinking of everything that we have just, just talked about, we have the choice of whether or not we will be wise or foolish. And the first Thing that we see about the wise builder is that he heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them. So he hears the teachings of Christ. Now, this is something that we have a lot of access to these days, right? Hearing the truth, hearing the teachings of Christ. Now, obviously, the, the teachings of Christ that we have now are coming to us in a different fashion than his disciples were getting here. Right? His disciples were getting directly from the mouth of Christ in person these teachings. Now, we don't have the luxury that they had of having Christ physically among us, giving us these teachings. But we have multiple sources. Actually, the Bible describes them as better sources than the disciples had because we have the completed word of God. Because this is how Christ speaks to us today. Christ speaks to us through his word. 
So we have the opportunity to hear the teachings of Christ by simply reading his word. Now we have other forms in which we could also hear the teachings of Christ. Because we have, obviously, our, our times in our devotions. We have times in Bible study. I know Pastor does a Bible study here on Tuesdays, I believe, in which he, he goes through and they go through different passages. There's another way that we can learn about the teachings of Christ through preaching, right? When we come to church and, and we sit and we hear the teachings from the Word of God, whether it's here or whether we listen to teachings on the radio throughout the week or watch YouTube videos or hear podcasts, there are multiple sources in which we can hear the teachings of Christ, in which we can learn and grow and find these truths that we are supposed to be applying in our day-to-day -day lives. So we're able to receive a teaching from God's Word. But now what makes the wise man stand out from the foolish man isn't hearing the Word of God. Because it says in uh, verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. So there is an aspect that both hear, and we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit, but what separates the wise man from the foolish man is the fact that not only does he hear the truths of the Lord, but he does the truth of the Lord. He applies the truth that he receives from hearing the word. He is not only a hearer of the word, but he is a doer of the word, as James describes for us. Now, this is much harder and takes greater commitment than just hearing. right? Because it is one thing to you know, maybe read God's word and then just let it go you know, into our brains and then we don't think about it at all. We, we read God's word, we check the box, we're good for the day. Or it's really easy to come and sit in the pew and hear the things that the preacher shares and hears the truth of God's word and let it go in one ear and out the other and it never really sinks deep into our heart. It's much more difficult to take the truths that we receive from God's word and line them up with our life and apply them. Now, it's not physically harder. It's not harder from the standpoint that it's complicated, but rather it is harder from the standpoint in which it hurts, right? Because we as humans are typically very prideful people. We don't like to be corrected. We don't like to, to have someone tell us we're not doing something right. So oftentimes a barrier from people applying the truth of God's word isn't that they, they don't know how to apply God's word to their life, but rather they don't want to apply God's word to their life. It's difficult to hear the truth and see themselves and appraise their lives from the truth and say, I lack here, I lack here, I lack here, I need to do better, I need to change the way that I live. So it's very difficult to do that. And it takes real commitment to actually first of all, hear the truth, but then also apply the truth. It takes spiritual discipline, and it takes really the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to be able to consistently do this. This is why the wise man is described as one that hears and does Christ's teaching. And what this verse describes it as is a man who builds his house upon a rock. So this is where the illustration comes in. The illustration comes in in which it is the building of houses. Now we can all probably agree that a rock is a very solid foundation, especially when we'll compare it to that of sand. So Christ is likening the teaching, and not just the teaching that he has done, but the teaching and the application of that teaching into our lives of that as a solid rock. So as we build the house of our lives upon this solid rock, it is built upon a firm foundation. And as we continue in verse 25, it says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. So we're seeing in this verse that, again, Staying with this illustration of a house, storms come. The house gets tested. But because of the foundation of the house, the house is able to stand. 
So as we take this illustration and apply it to our lives, as we are those who hear God's word and apply God's word and live the truth of God's word in our lives, we are building our lives upon, upon the solid foundation, the solid rock, so that when the storms of life come and the storms of life hit, we are on a solid foundation. And the house doesn't collapse. The house doesn't crumble. It doesn't come toppling down because of the trials that we may face. We can all probably agree and share testimony of the times where we have had trials, where things did not go the way in which we thought they were going to go, things in which we didn't expect to happen, things that were difficult, things that were tough, things that may have even had us questioning, God, why is this happening to me in my life? And this is why it's important that we base our lives on God's word. Because as we base our lives on the truth of God's word, we're able to find answer to those questions. So when those storms hit and those storms strike and those questions start to swirl and start to attack the house that is our life, we can go to that foundation. And we can know that that foundation is firm. We can find answers and we can find comfort and we can find shelter in the truth of God's word. So again, when these storms come, it does not, the house does not fall. So biblical truth, when applied, provides us with a firm foundation on which we can base our lives. So when the storms of life come, we can remain firm. But the question is, are we applying God's truth? Because again, like I stated, we can hear God's truth in many different ways. We can take in, we can hear the truth from various sources, but are we applying that? Are we, is our lives being constantly molded and changed by the truth of God's word? And again, this is something that is personal to each and every one of us, right? I can't make you guys apply anything in your life, nor could you make me apply anything in my life. It is the decision that we make that we allow the Lord to transform our lives through the teaching of his word. So that is a question this morning. Are we applying God's truth in our life? And notice it doesn't just say partial truth. It's just the truth. Right? Here are the sayings of mine, not part of the sayings of mine. We need to make sure that we are applying the whole truth of God's word to our lives. It's not a buffet in which we can just take a little bit of this. I like this truth, so I'm going to apply it. And I like this truth, so I'm going to apply it. And I like this truth, so I'm going to apply it. But I don't like this truth, I don't like that truth, I don't like that truth, so I'm not going to apply those to my life. But rather, it talks about the whole truth. We are to be applying the whole thing to our life. We can't reject some things because, well, I don't really like how that is going to change my life. Or I don't really like how this makes me feel. But rather, we are to be applying the whole truth if we want that firm, complete foundation of biblical truth in our lives. So that is the wise builder. The wise builder hears God's truth, applies God's truth, and because of the application of God's truth, as the storms of life come, he is able to stand firm because of that firm foundation. But now let's look at the foolish builder. The foolish builder, verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which builds his house upon the sand. So here, again, we see very similar to the wise builder, is that the foolish builder also hears, hears the truth. Right? They have access to the truth. Right? The foolish builder isn't one that completely ignores it, and doesn't even want to hear it, and doesn't want to even in, take the opportunity. But rather, a foolish builder can be one that hears the truth, one that reads the truth. But again, the difference is what he does with that truth. And that is really the key difference, because the key difference is that the foolish builder never applies that truth to his life. He hears it. Again, he may read his Bible and check that box. He may sit in the pew every Sunday. But he never lets that knowledge of the truth sink down and apply into his heart. So we see that that is a, a very key distinction that we need to make sure in our lives that we are allowing to happen. Right? That we're not going to be one of those who may read God's word just to check the box that we did it and then move on with our lives. 
to make sure that we're not one of those believers who sits in the pew and hears the word of God and then never lets it change their lives, but rather we are those who hear the truth and apply the truth. Because we see the foolish builder doesn't do that. The foolish builder does not apply that truth. And there are so many people that fall into this category partially because they don't always even recognize that they're falling into this category. They almost get deceived in the fact that you know, they they're feel like they're doing the right thing. But it's that honest assessment that we need to continuously have of, am I striving to be more like Christ? Am I striving to apply the truth that I'm reading about into my life? Am I looking for ways to plug this into my life and allow it to transform the way I make decisions, the way that I talk, the way that I react to others, the way in which I see the entire world, really? It's a key distinction. Again, there are many of those that don't apply God's word as their foundation. So what do the foolish builders apply for their foundation? If they're not doing the applied truth of God's word, what is their foundation? Well, oftentimes, as Christ had talked about in previous teachings, they build their lives off of hypocrisy. They build their lives off of knowing in their head the truth, but never knowing in their heart the truth, which means that they lean on their own wisdom. Again, we, we've looked at the dichotomy of this throughout most of this study of the hypocrisy and, and how we need to be pursuing the truth of God's word. And Christ likens this to sand. Now, I'm sure that we are all familiar with sand, um, and the, the characteristics of sand versus the characteristic of rocks, we know that sand is not incredibly stable. And a key example of this is if we've ever tried to move quickly or run in sand. You don't get very far very fast if you're trying to run in sand. Why? Well, because it's not solid. It shifts around, it moves, it, it, it falls under the pressure. And this is what a life that is built off of hypocrisy and man's wisdom does. It is built on something that faults under pressure. So when storms come and the house that is built upon sand or built upon man's philosophy, not on the applied truth of God's word, it falls. It falls under that pressure. And look at the extent of it here in verse 27. It says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. We can see the extent of which the fall of the foolish man's house is. If not that, it just kind of shifts a little bit and is no longer level. It isn't that it just springs a leak maybe here or there when the, when the rains come. It isn't that a few shingles get ripped off the roof when the winds start blowing. But rather, it falls, and the fall is great. It completely collapses, which shows the futility of man's wisdom. It shows the shallowness of man's wisdom as they try to build their life based off of their own wisdom. It just completely collapses. When it actually gets tested, when the rain comes and the winds blow, if it beats upon that house, it just can't stand. So again, as we, we kind of try to draw this back into how Christ is concluding all this teaching, he's giving us this very clear, clear warning where it is a choice. What are you going to do with the teachings that I have for you? What are you going to do with the truth that I'm giving you? Are you going to apply it? Are you going to heed it and use it? Because if you do, you'll be like a wise builder who builds upon a rock. So when the storms of life come, it holds firm. Or are you only going to hear the truths that I have for you? 
Are you going to forsake those truths? Are you going to be hypocritical about living those truths to where you might look like on the outside that you do that, but internally you're not living by the truths that I give you? Are you building your life on your own wisdom? Because if you're building your life on your own wisdom or hypocritical living, the storms are still going to come, but your foundation is poor. Your foundation is weak. It's not stable. And not only are you going to fall, but the fall will be great. So what are you going to choose? What is the choice that you're going to make? Are you going to choose to apply the truth? Or choose to only hear the truth? This is a very stern warning to make sure that you base your life on the truth of God's word. Not purely in just appearance, not purely in name only, but in the reality of your life. Now obviously these teachings astonish the people. We touched on it a little bit in verses 28 and 29. Because after Christ taught all of this, when he ended all of these sayings, the people were astonished. They were left thinking. They were left searching. They were left wondering. And again, the verse 29 says, He taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes, because the scribes' authority was basically in their ability to study, whereas Christ's authority came from heaven. It was divine authority. Left them questioning, left them wondering. Maybe in similar ways to how this series has left us questioning and wondering in our lives. If we are living the proper way. So as we conclude this morning, there are a few questions that we really have to address. Are we a wise builder or a foolish builder? Again, this is a choice that we make doesn't automatically happen in our lives that as soon as we're saved, we're automatically this, this wise builder that's always going to do everything right. But rather, throughout our lives, we're going to continuously grow, continuously mature, continuously discover new things in God's word that may not match our way of living, that may not match the way that we naturally think, which is where that choice comes in. Are you going to be the one that decides, I'm going to be a wise builder, not just hear this truth, but apply this truth? Or will you be a foolish builder that sees it, that hears it, that knows it doesn't line up? And you know what? It's too hard. I'm not going to do it. Are you applying and living the truth of God's word? Or are you only a hearer? hypocritically pretending to be, quote-unquote, a good Christian. Because there's a difference. Christ lays out the difference. Because storms are going to come. It's not an if, it's a when. And you will want to make sure that you have built on the proper foundation. Are you building on the proper foundation today? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word, for this study that is so aptly laid before us, and how you would seek for us to live. Lord, we know that just in these few chapters, Christ didn't address everything in which we may find our lives coming across. But Lord, we know through the entirety of your word, through the entirety of the teaching of your word, that it is completely sufficient for any situation that we may find ourselves in. Lord, it's not always easy to hear your word and view ourselves and see an area of struggle, see an area of lacking, see an area of which we need improvement, and to have the humility to forsake our own wisdom and apply your truth. But Lord, we know that it is completely necessary. Lord, if we want to have that firm foundation, 
You have to apply your truth. There's no other way to have that firm foundation other than your truth. So Lord, be with us as we seek to apply your truth. Again, help us to be doers, and not just hearers. Help us to be those who build on a solid foundation of your word. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.